Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another author interview from some of my amazing clients inside of Four Eagles Publishing. And today I'm talking to Diane Carter, who is a um, an author inside of one of the multi-author book projects we have going at the moment, Phoenix Rising. Welcome, Diane. Thank you for being here with me today. Hi, Taryn. Thank you. I'm just going to introduce Diane and let you know um, a little bit about her and then I'm going to hand over the reins to her. So Diane is a Japanese acupuncturist and a breathwork and meditation facilitator. Tell us, Diane, tell us a bit more about your business, who you work with and why you're passionate about what you do. Yeah, well, the, um, the thing I love about what I do is that I get to work with people who are really um, passionate about their health and their their consciousness and how their uh, spectrum of life, how their lifestyle helps them um, to yet yeah, live their best life possible so that they're really becoming aware and so many more people are becoming aware of, yeah, the their opportunities and their um, power within that they can tap into. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so people that are really looking to up-level um, their health and their lifestyle and mm -hmm. just become more conscious of how they can regulate, um, especially with a lot of fear and anxiety that are surrounding us at the moment. Um, yeah. Really, it's, I think, showing <laughs> us that we can... Ooh, bless sorry. you. <laughs> Yeah. So it can, it's showing us that we can um, really um, rely on ourselves and that we, we do need to rely on ourselves and that we do have yeah. that energy and power within to do that. So I help facilitate people to do that. Mm, yeah, and breath is such an important part of everyday life. I don't even think, I, I remember very <coughs> clearly the, the one day, um, it was about, Oh, must have been about 13 years ago and I went to my doctor and she said Taryn you're not breathing properly and I said what do you mean I'm not breathing properly she's like you don't know how to breathe and I said if I didn't know how to breathe I'd be dead you know I had no concept that there was actually a right and wrong way to breathe I suppose I, I don't even really want to use right and wrong way a more fulfilling way to breathe rather um, and how that can literally make such huge changes in your emotional um, as well as your physical well-being. So I think it's such an important um, aspect that people need to learn more about. What are exactly. your thoughts on that? Yes, and, yeah, yeah and most people don't recognise that they do have some breathing dysfunction. So mm -hmm. just sh shallow breathing uh, or fast breathing um, is uh, a breathing dysfunction and if we're mm. doing that every day um, you know month after month year after year then we're not getting the um, the benefits of the oxygen the circulation the yeah the the deeper um, uh, nourishment of our our organs and our um, our immune system benefits our digestion benefits you know when we are breathing consciously and making the most out of every breath and to be able to calm ourselves in any moment or any circumstance um, or energize ourselves um, this is what um, conscious yeah breathing conscious breath work can do yeah it's amazing it's amazing and i met um diane on a retreat and i was actually lucky enough to receive <laughs> an emergency acupuncture session from her um, for a terrible migraine and it was actually I'm I'm terrified of needles and she was so gentle I didn't even feel it it was just the most amazing nurturing session so thank you for that Diane um, if anyone is in your local area I so strongly suggest that they go and see Diane where are you located love so um, halfway between Sydney and Brisbane um, on the mid-north mm. coast, so um, Nambucca Heads. And, yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful little coastal town. So um, I'm, I'm doing, yeah, some yeah, beautiful work with the community here and we've done um, community acupuncture. We're in, in, um, in uh, a group, quiet group, um, energy, three tables and 
you know, treating people um, within, you know, the same space as well as breathwork classes and meditation classes. Um, so, yeah, working with people here, but then also online, I'm starting to work more and more with people who uh, have reached out. If we've really been able to create some changes with, um, yeah, their their um, their concerns um, through the breath, through um, self acupressure, through aromatherapy, um, through yeah, some guided meditation. All really easy, able to to do things really um, quickly in you know in any any moment. So yeah, I'm really enjoying yeah. that and the Good. yeah. The, the, the opportunity to write about this too through um, mm -hmm. Phoenix Rising yeah. and what I'm passionate about is, yeah, such a great opportunity to have bring these all these stories together. So mm -hmm. I hear so many so many stories from the people that I treat, and you know, it's all about sharing. Once we share these stories, we get to see how much we are the same, rather than you know how how different we are. So yeah, yeah, I think yeah. That's, that's such a beautiful way of putting it. Storytelling shows us our um, similarities rather than our differences. I love that. Um, so, what yeah. drew you to Phoenix Rising, Diane? What kind of intrigued you and pulled you in and made you say, "Yes, I have to be a part of this project"? Yeah, great question. It is. I love being able to yeah really get to the source of my motivations for things. Um, it helps really helps keep me on track for when I choose mm. to be involved in a project. And um, I think it was, I mean, it's really to start to reach out to more people um, with the, the work um, that I do and what I've discovered that, that works for people um, and works for mm. myself. And I've been doing this for, you know, 25 years. And um, so I've been working one-on-one -on -one with people, you know, for a long time. And um there's yeah a lot of wisdom and a lot of things that I've discovered that I just really want to share that and mm -hmm. um, the opportunity to write about you know my own personal um, journey as well. I mean I'm I've published other articles, um, but not not so on such a personal note. So um, talking about my own journey and talking about the people that I've worked with and been able to share the wisdom um, of you know, coming back to ourselves and our own um, power within to shape our realities and to shape our destinies. Um, I just, yeah, it really felt like a beautiful opportunity to, um, yeah, to, to do that with with support. Um, yeah. So I want to, I love writing and I really want to hone my, um, my skills for that even more. So, and I really love your, you know, your writing really, uh, it Thank really, you. that, that's what really drew me in um I guess mm. those you know, those two things and um, yeah beautiful yeah books are such a great way them. to expand your reach and um really connect with people on that personal level because I mean everybody can write you know a scientific article or a you know one of those really bad marketing posts but in order to make people move you've got to connect with them on a soul level on a more personal level right yes. so um, and not the people aren't ready to tell their story inside of a solo book and that's absolutely fine these multi-author book projects are such a great way to you know dip your toe in the water expand your reach increase your credibility um, become known for what you do, increase your prices, sell out your programs, all of those sorts of things, but in a very supportive environment, right? It's not just you on your own um, or, you know, working with me, us together working on this thing. It's it's us plus, you know, 25 other women who are coming together and really supporting each other, leveraging each other's networks. And this isn't just an Australian thing either. It's, it's a global impact. I mean, we've got authors in Puerto Rico, um, in multiple states in the US, multiple states here in Australia, New Zealand. Um, I've got a couple, you know, of authors sitting on the fence in, in London. They're still deciding whether or not they want to come on board. Um, but this is such a global reach and, and we can have great impact through storytelling because like you said, it shows us 
our similarities rather than our differences. And we want to do business with people who are similar to us because then we we feel like we know them. They're not strangers anymore. Um, and it accelerates that no like trust factor, right? That it takes for people to buy from you. Yeah. And yeah, yeah that sense of being able to um, attract the people that resonate with with my story and, and you know, yes. what I've been through, what, you know, I've um, experienced. Um, I've been that, yeah, we want to work, as you said, with people that um, are part of our tribe or that we resonate with or that understand us and that can hold mm -hmm. a space, you know, for us to, you know, to share, to be vulnerable and... Um, so yeah. I guess this is an opportunity for me, for people to get to know me and to know um, if I'm the kind of person that they would like to, you know, do a breathwork um, session with online um, or in person or have a Japanese acupuncture session or facial rejuvenation is something else I, I work with. And mm. um, so, yeah, there's lots of opportunities for people to um yeah, to be able to, to to learn more about themselves, but you know, to yeah. do that through through support. So as a uh, as a therapist, you know, that's what I um, I do. I really want to empower mm. other people to find that as as what you do, to mm. you know, empowering people to find their voice and uh, yeah, to really, um, get that out there so that we can connect with more people and and share this you know this this human wisdom that that we all have a piece yeah. of the puzzle. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, it is it is medicine. Storytelling is medicine, right? I mean, every, every wisdom ever passed down is best received in storytelling, right? It's, it's all well and good to tell people, you know, something that's very logical, very black and white in like a one sentence punch in the face kind of um, delivery. But if you tell them a story, then they're going to emotively connect with that. They're going to remember that, you know, weeks, months, years down the line, that story that you told them and that and that wisdom that was embedded within that story. But they won't remember if you told them, like, oh, you need to breathe properly. But if you tell them a story about breath, you know, they're going to remember that because on some level um, they've connected with it. It's like um, when we, as kids when we're learning, you know, we, we are told stories to learn or we're told songs or rhymes to learn because we retain that information. It, it wakes up parts of our brain that are otherwise asleep. Yeah. It's it's yes. absolute magic. And um, there's something transformative that happens, and I can't even explain it. I, I keep searching for the words, and they will come to explain the absolute transformation that happens to a woman especially, men too, but to women especially, when we are given the opportunity to connect with and write our story. Because most of the time we're not even asked, we don't even think about it, we just go about you know, our daily life, but it makes us who we are. And when you sit down to really connect with that and write about it, write about what you stand for, what you're passionate about, what you've been through, what your life looks like and, and why you are passionate about where you are and where you're going, this it's just, it's just this, this healing magic that happens for you. And when other women read this as well, they go, oh, it's possible for me too. It is safe to use my voice. It is safe to express. It is safe to be me. I'm not alone. You know, and that's the yeah. what everyone needs to hear. You are not alone. Because we are we are herd animals, really. <laughs> we Absolutely. are herd animals. Yeah. You know, I love being alone. I'm very much an introvert, but there are times when I'm like, no, no, I just need, I need to be touched or I need to be heard or I need to be just around other people who get me. And it's, um, yeah, such a beautiful container. So thank you. Thank you for saying yes to Phoenix Rising and um, becoming, being brave enough and courageous enough to step up and tell your story, but also choosing to expand your business in this way because it will expand your visibility, will increase your credibility. And, you know, you get to call yourself a best-selling author, be on mm -hmm. podcasts, be on the 
media, possibly increase your prices if that's what you want to do, but mostly show up and serve more people. So thank you for saying yes, and thank you for joining me in this interview today. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I can't wait to read your story inside the book when it comes out in the next couple of months. Yeah, I look forward to um, yeah being able to read the other stories of the other incredible women um, as well. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying crafting my story and it just bringing up yeah so many um, uh, amazing memories. But yeah, some things that I haven't thought about for so long, and it's like okay, you know, this is a part of it too. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll be speaking again soon. Great. Thanks, Taryn. Bye, Bye. Diane. Bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning in.